Hi guys, welcome back. Today I want to tell you my fourth grade plans. Okay, so for science, we will be doing physics this year. I follow the well-trained mind, so I like to do one kind of science per year. This year we do chemistry for the whole year, and then this next year we'll do physics for the whole year. So for that, we're going to try out exploration education. And it's nice because it has three different levels, so all my kids can learn physics at the same time at their own level. We will also be doing Kiwi Creates again. This particular son likes the hardest ones. He's really talented at building things and taking things apart, so he likes to be challenged that way. We might also do Mel Science. We have the Mel Science kits, but I'm not sure if we will have enough in our homeschool budget. For PE, we will be doing a PE homeschool class. We did that this year. My kids love it. This is a Taekwondo slash regular PE class, so they get to learn things like squats and push-ups and things that I would not be teaching them. <laughs> I can't even do a push-up, so it's good that they have that experience. For math, we'll continue with Matthew C. So he is about halfway through, so finish that up over the summer and maybe part of the beginning of the school year, then we'll move on to the next level. He also is doing Mequan math. I like to pair that with Matthew C. It, it complements it really well. And then this year I added Memorial Math Challenge books, and so basically each page is just a page of math facts, and you just do it as fast as you can. We have addition and subtraction in this book, and it just helps you really internalize the math facts. I always like to add logic books from the Critical Thinking Company. So things like Mind Benders, Balance Benders, Math Analogies. I like to add those as well. I put that with math because they're kind of, to me, logic and math go together. For language arts, I put together a reading list for him each year based off of books from the cycle we are in in The Well-Trained Mind. So their history cycle and the literature cycle. I just kind of make a list of ones I want him to read himself and ones I'll find online. From LibriVox that we can listen to in the car as we're driving. And then of course in the car everyone listens to the same book. For handwriting we're going to continue with copywork. This year I found a free pdf that had uh, different quotes from famous people like Helen Keller, Benjamin Franklin, people like that. But this next year I might move to something from Memoria Press. It's like a copywork thing. I haven't started looking for that yet so I'm not sure what we'll do for that. For printing we'll keep doing Xander Blozer and also for cursing Xander Blozer. For writing we will continue with excellence in writing. The program is superb. It's so easy to use. The teacher teaches the program, and each lesson is only about five minutes. It's phenomenal. Now for spelling, this is my son that has the most trouble with spelling, so I've tried lots of different programs this year just to try and hit it and see if there's any kind of rapid improvement. It is getting better. So this year, we have tried sequential spelling. We tried that last year too. I like sequential spelling, but my sons didn't like it as much as all about spelling. We also tried the Evermore Building Spelling Skills books. We'll do that again next year for sure. It takes maybe five minutes a day. And my kids can do them independently for the most part. And this year we added Nessie, so we'll continue with that next year as well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we'll continue with all about spelling. It's kind of, I don't like all the moving pieces so much. It's a great program and I can see it working. I just don't love that it takes a while. And then of course I'll add Language Smarts from the Critical Thinking Company. It looks really good. It covers things like grammar and spelling and little bits of writing. It's not like a full writing program or a full spelling program. Or a full grammar program you could use it as a language arts program or as a supplement so we just do a page a day so there's 300 something pages in the book they won't finish in one year it's fine it's just kind of just to keep their memory fresh and reteaching things they may have forgotten and welcome to part two <laughs> i ran out of time when i was filming last time so part two okay so for spanish we i totally dropped the ball this year we did not end up doing any spanish or foreign language of any kind Last year we did song school Spanish, which I really liked, and we're going to do that again this next year with all three kids. It'll be repeat for the first two, but since we didn't do it for a year, it'll be fine. And then this year I also bought flip-flop Spanish, but like I said, we never got to it. I'll add that as well. I'll probably do like an every other day kind of thing, just to switch it up a little bit. Now we are in a distance learning program, which is how we afford homeschool, and they've been offering online classes for free. So next year, they are offering an online Spanish class, which we signed up for, and I'm very excited about that. I might, I might get an online native speaker tutor as well, just to really immerse them in the Spanish. I'm not sure if we're going to go that route yet or not. We have a lot this year, so it might not fit in. We are also going to be studying Latin this year, and I got Minimus Latin, which looks really fun. It's a lot of hands-on things, and it's about, it's a story about a real family, so I'm excited for that. I won't be spending as much time on that as I am with the Spanish, of course, so probably just two to three days a week just to kind of get an introduction and get a foundation for that. For music, we will continue with piano. We have used Hoffman Academy and Simply Piano in the past and this year. Next year, I'll probably just continue with Hoffman. I feel like it goes a lot deeper in skill development, 
than Simply Piano does, although Simply Piano does give a lot more practice with sight reading. They're both good programs and a blend of them is excellent, but my kids only want to do Simply Piano because they like playing their favorite popular songs on the app. So I'll probably just go back to Hoffman because I think it just works better as far as skill development goes. Now my son took violin this year through a homeschool strings group and he'll do that again next year. And he learned a lot. I was I was really impressed. It's once a week and it's an hour and a half in a group class. We'll definitely be doing that again. And then this year I'm going to add singing. I'm not sure which program I'm going to use yet. There's a couple I'm looking at right now. We have been doing the singsofa.com, which is a free sofa program. She's basically taken YouTube videos and put them together into kind of a ordered list type thing. And it's great. You know, my kids can match notes and do like the do, re, mi signs and stuff. But I just want them to get more of the mechanics of singing down, you know, like breathing and where to project your voice, things like that. So we're going to move away from singsofa.com for now and go to a more skill-based program. This year for social studies, we did Around the World with Picture Books Part 1 and we loved it. However, next year we're going to go back to uh, Story of the World in Part 4, just because I do think the four-year history cycle is really important to keep. We had an extra year because I started him in kindergarten on the history instead of first grade, so we had an extra year to play with. And, you know, he does need to know those things that happened in modern times, like, you know, wars and things like that. So we'll be doing history that way, but I might also just buy the teacher's manual for the Around the World with Picture Books Part 2 and just go really slowly and just do one country every month or two, just because we really liked it and it was so much fun and I don't want to stop doing it, but I already have Story of the World, so it's like, oh, what do I do? But we really enjoyed their program, so I'll probably use some of their stuff in the future as well. We will continue with typing next year. He used All the Right Type, and it's a good program, has games and stuff. There's so many free typing programs out there. I don't know if All the Right Type is free. It was through the distance learning program, but there's so many different programs out there. Free, not free, whatever you want, whatever works for you. We also signed up for Nessie though, and Nessie has a typing program that teaches you to type by practicing the words you're learning through the spelling that you did on the same app. So I think I'm going to try and switch to that a little bit. We need to both but just because I want spelling to really come come together for this child of mine. I really would like spelling to improve, so it seemed like a win-win, so we'll probably be going more towards an Etsy next year. For art, we're doing a bunch of programs. We are trying Home Art Studio again this year. We did it a couple years ago. My kids liked it a lot, so I thought, why not? We've done it till the last few years, and I wasn't going to do it this next year, but then I found the next two levels at a thrift store, so... I bought them because they're only like 20 bucks. If we get through Home Art Studio, we might do Atelier or let's save that for next year. We are going to do Draw 3D again just for drawing practice. It's a really good program. It's a bit spendy, but my kids' drawing, it really improved following it. I'm going to be doing a little bit of financial education as well. I always talk about saving money and things like that and not wasting it. But I found this free website that has grade level lessons. I think it's K through 12 about money and different things. And so I'll link it below. It looked really good. So I think we're just going to start doing like one or two days a week of like a little money lesson and just go through everything so that my kids can be really financially smart as they get older. I'm also going to be adding the Tuttle Twins, probably just one day a week. So the guy that created them read these staples of the economic world and he's kind of translated the message into kids books. And so I thought it would be fun to just read through them and do the activities and just kind of, you know, learn more about money and how things work. Now for handicrafts, we haven't done handicrafts yet. Mostly because I'm not crafty. I love to paint, but it's not really a handicraft that I could just teach my kids and they could just do while I read to them. So this year I'm gonna, I might get a wood burning kit for them with a book that, you know, shows how to do all the different marks and things like that. I think they'd really enjoy that. I might get perler beads. I don't really feel like that's like a handicraft per se. It's more just like an activity to do, but it might be fun for them. And then I'm also going to see if my mom remembers how to crochet and see if she can teach them because I don't know how to crochet but that would be a good thing for them to do. Just get their hands busy while they listen. I'm also going to add coding this year. We haven't really done it. We have, we've gotten stuff for it. We just haven't tried it yet. So what I have is a Lego spike essential kit that teaches you how to program and you build the Lego things and then you plug it into the computer and then they move depending on how you program it. It's pretty cool. I have a few Osborne books that talk about programming or what, how a computer works, things like that. And then I got some different kind of robotics type things. I'll link everything down below. So that will be fun. And I know this sounds like so much for fourth grade, but all this stuff is not happening every day. You know, some things just once or twice a week and I'll just kind of move things around so it's not a 12 hour day or anything like that. 
Okay, so that's our plan for fourth grade. It's a lot. It probably all won't get done. <laughs> but that's the plan for now. I feel like fourth grade is kind of a big jump up in skill level. At least that's what I would like it to be. So we will see how the year goes. Let me know in the comments what you are doing for fourth grade. And please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thank you.